It was the, I forget when it was, but it was right before COVID. And I was in Washington and I got sick. I got, uh-oh, are we gonna hold them? Churro! Come here, Churro. We do have a lot of dog questions, sis. This is good. Come here, mama. It's That's a, a vicious baby. Oh my gosh. My I baby. love the cape. My angel. <laughs> like my it's angel like me boy. and Game of Tones. <laughs> my angel. <laughs> It's Kelly and Ryan from AMS. We're here at the Gramercy Theater, and we are getting the chance to talk to John Five tonight. And don't forget Churro. Oh, yeah, Churro as well. Churro the dog. We also got a chance to talk to his guitar tech, David, about all the gear he's using on the tour, including guitars, amps, mandolins, and an infamous ray gun. Well, it's really, really awesome to be here with you, John. Well, thank you for having me. So my first question that I have for you, I read that you were initially inspired by the banjo playing on Hee Haw. That's right. When you first started out? That's right. There was a a kid named Jimmy Henley who was the banjo champion in 1976, and he was on Hee Haw with Roy Clark. And Roy Clark was introducing him and said, oh, this is the banjo champion, and blah, 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 and they play. And I remember it, and that's what made me want to play guitar because banjo, you know, I knew it wasn't super cool, even though I was so little, you know? But um, I just recently, I looked it up because everything's on YouTube. Mm -hmm. And sure enough, my memory, it was right. And there it was. And you could look it up and all that stuff. And it's funny to see the actual thing that made me want to play guitar. And it was right there. It was so weird, you know. So why not banjo? Well, because, you know, you can't get many ladies playing banjo. It's really all about the ladies at the end of the day. <laughs> well, not really, but it's it's all a thing. But, you know, did you ever date a banjo player? No. There but you go. I, I probably would, but uh, I'm a nerd, so. <laughs> That's right. Well, the, yeah, does your husband play banjo? Uh, no. <laughs> there you go. See, where we go. No. Do you incorporate any of that into your guitar playing, like the mm-hmm. banjo rolls? Actually, like I play banjo tonight. Really? Yeah, I'm going to play banjo tonight for the show. Yes, yeah. double neck. Hmm. Like a double neck banjo. No, no, I I bring it out and <laughs> get the old mandolin too, and all sorts of different instruments. So it's a lot yeah. of fun. So how did you get into heavier music from there? Well, it was uh, I had an epiphany. I saw uh, the Woodstock movie was on cable TV, and I saw Jimi Hendrix, <laughs> and I was like, oh my god, because I was just listening to Roy Clark and and country guys and then i heard hendrix and i was like oh my god you know and it blew my mind and so everything was hendrix and i had older sisters so beatles jethro tull the rolling stones um the who all that stuff i was it was all there and because they had all had the records and and um yeah my sisters were older so i had an epiphany like just like oh my god this is incredible and i want this and this and this and this and there was a plethora of music of albums you know so at my uh, fingertips and it really just changed my life just going from you know hendrix and then van halen and kiss and all that stuff so it really it really was something else and you're someone who idolized those people and then got to work with them later in your life yeah how did that feel for you it, it really is strange and surreal because when you're little, I never really even dreamt that far. You know, you have dreams when you're a kid. You're like, I'm going to be this and this and this. And I just wanted to be a session musician and a, you know, a session guitar player. But I never even in my wildest dreams, even as a kid, like, said, oh, I'm going to be a well-known musician. I, ca- mm-hmm. I can't even say rock star because it's even so weird to me. But um, it just is very still to this day. It's just so strange to have worked with, you know, uh, all my heroes. It's very odd, you know, and, oh, yeah, and I, I don't bet. take it for granted. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm just thankful every day. I read that you submitted tapes to David Lee Roth's manager way, way back in the day. Yeah, like it was, it, that was one of the weirdest stories because how that all happened is, you know, yeah, I was just on my couch and, and, you know, I, I love to take risks. I always take risks. And then I, because I think 
you know, without risk, there's no life at all. You just, sure, yeah. you don't want to just be like this and comfortable. I've, I've never been like that. So I saw a number on the back of a book, of Dave's book, and I called it just out just of like the blue. <laughs> and they said, okay, well, we'll listen to it, whatever. We'll listen to it. And luckily they called and, and that, you know, landed a, She's a almost 30 year relationship working with Dave. Wow. It's incredible. After working with so many of these people, is there anything that you've learned? Like any one tip that you got, you got over the course of your career that's like a nugget that you bring with you? Oh, absolutely. Whenever there is a meeting or a business meeting or anything, it doesn't matter if it's Motley Crue or Zombie or Manson or David Lee Roth or anybody, I'm always listening. I'm listening to what they're saying because these are the answers to the tests. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I've been doing this for a minute. And so I've used that knowledge and used it to my, you know, uh, uh, my knowledge and going through things and doing things the right way and being smart enough to like not do certain things when you think it was like, Oh, I should do this, but really you shouldn't. And I've always really listened in meetings and it's helped so much. I always do that. Like if, if you guys were having a meeting, you'd be like, Hey, why is John creeping in the uh, corner <laughs> over there? You know, because I just want to learn. You're absorbing. It, yeah. Yeah. It's a business, you know, and I just am trying to do the right thing and not the wrong thing. Well, I'm sure that type of listening helps for your songwriting as well. Yes. Yes. Yeah. It's, um, with songwriting with, Writing with other artists, I think how it really helped me is I was such a fan of the people I've written with. Mm -hmm. So all my life, I was playing Van Halen songs or Kiss songs or Motley Crue songs. Or, so I know their catalog is just as well as they do. And if there's like, oh, give me something like this or that or Skinnerd or something, that was a good example. Like you know, they were writing and I knew all their songs and they would reference songs mm. and I knew exactly what it was. Right. So I think that's why I've had good success. Uh oh, here comes my ride. <laughs> <laughs> I think I've had really good success with writing with people. And I've always written for the artists. A lot of songwriters, they, they write for other, uh, companies like, mm -hmm. um, publishers or record labels, but I've always written with the artists because they tell you exactly what they want. And that's what really has helped me a lot. So do you think that that's as much to be for your success as being a good guitar player is also showing up on time, listening, kind of having your homework done? Absolutely. I yeah. think that, I think that's so imperative because being, uh, good at your job, being a good guitar player, a bass player, drummer, singer, that's half of it. But the other half, you got to live with these people. Mm. So you have to be a good person. You have to understand who the boss is. You have to be on time, be, you know, uh, just be a good person because you're around these people all the time and you're only on stage an hour and a half a night. You know? Right. Right. Now, when you are writing for other artists, how does your approach to writing differ based on the genre or artist? Well, I think it's, uh, you know, if you're going to go in writing for a certain artist, you kind of already have an idea, except for one time <laughs> it backfired on me mm. and I was going to write with Steve Perry. Oh, cool. And, you know, we all know every journey song in the world and all that stuff. But, um, Steve was like, no, I don't want anything like that. And mm. I was like, oh, okay. You know? And he was the only artist that didn't want it to sound like, you know, his past. Did he clue you in on what he was looking for? Or did you have to kind of hunt through the dark? Or? We just sat and went through songs and worked on songs. And, uh, you know, I, I have a great song on his latest record cool. called Sunshine's Gray. And, uh, but it was, it, that was the only time it didn't work. Hmm. But you're, you know, you're always at, on your toes, so. Yeah, because if you come in with too much of a preconceived notion of what you're trying to do and then they throw you in the opposite direction, that could, I can right. see it, that could be hard. Yeah, right? yeah, 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 yeah.
Are you someone who can keep all of that knowledge like at the ready? Like you're able to store a lot of information in your head about all. Like you have a large catalog of music as well. So how do you keep that all sharp and keep that all at the ready?、Uh, you know, that's a great question because when I joined Motley Crue, I was touring with Rob Zombie, so I was doing the Rob Zombie set, and then I was doing this too, and this. I I like to exercise my mind. It's like, and I test myself. There's no improv here, so every song it's all instrumental. So nothing is improv. It's exactly how it's written on the record, and that's a zillion notes, a、right. zillion <laughs> notes. So, but I like that because I'm you know keeping my mind sharp.、Mm-hmm. So I had the zombie set, my set, and I learned all of Molly Crew's set. So there was tons of music in my head. Yeah.、Mm. But I like that, you know. And I think that it's just like anything, you know. You keep your mind sharp. You're gonna, you know, it keeps it healthy. Is there anything you do to keep your mind sharp? Hmm. Just it's just sharp. <laughs> it's just, just naturally music, sharp. Just I eat well. I try to get good sleep, and and. You know, I think that's another thing that's really important about being on the road, is you have to, you know, a lot of people party or this, that, or the other thing, but I try to do the complete opposite and just like get sleep, eat right, and just try to do the right thing because you don't want to go up there sick. You know? Oh yeah, it's no. It's the worst thing ever. So. I do try to keep everything in tune, you know, for for the people. You know, they wait a long time for these shows and they pay a lot of money, and I just want to give them the best show possible. Of course, and the music you're playing is really intense too. So、yeah. keeping that up for a really long time, I could see that getting very physically challenging. Yeah, it is. It is, and、uh, it's funny. There was this one time where it was the I forget when it was, but it was right before COVID, and I was in Washington. And I got sick. I got. Uh oh. We, are we gonna hold him? Churro, come here, Churro. We do have a lot of dog questions, sis. This is good. Come here, Mama. That's a, a vicious baby. Oh my gosh! My I love the cape. My angel. <laughs> my angel boy. That's like me and Game of Thrones. My angel. That's your next one. <laughs> Thank you. 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 Oh, churro, and he's all naked. Oh my god! Churro, he's got churro like the little churro.、Snake. Yeah, he's got no hair. <laughs> oh, you kidding? So he's, he's all naked under there. Well, churro, yeah, like the mohawk. Hi, blah, blah. You know? So, um, anyway, so yeah, there was a time when I was in Washington <laughs> and I got super sick. It was right before COVID, and I got COVID, and no one、oh、knew what、god. it was,、uh-huh. but I got it so bad. I mean, I got it so bad. It was no one knew what was wrong with me. I couldn't even walk. Oh God! And I didn't cancel any shows. Well, I canceled one show. How did you do that? How did you play through that? I don't know because I thought to myself, "Oh well, I'm not going to die." <laughs> yeah, right. I swear, I,、yeah. that's what I thought.、Yeah. I thought, "Oh, I'm not going to die," you know. But I had no idea. I could not breathe. I had to buy a fan and put it in my face because I couldn't breathe. Jeez. So how'd you get through? It? Like, did you just recover and just keep going, or it took two months? Two months、wow. after tour to get through it. I couldn't believe it. Wow. I, I and yeah, it was COVID when COVID just hit. So that's it, your bar. Like, if I'm not gonna die, I guess I'll do yeah, it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah.、Right. Wow. But I was, I had no idea, and I easily could have just died in one of those hotel rooms.、It's、so weird.、Unglamorous. I had no idea. So、yeah. many better ways to go. Yeah. So for tonight, what's the thrill of you being the boss? Now you're calling the shots. You are the singer. You are the band, essentially. Other than、mm. you've got a drummer, how's that different than playing with Crew or, or David Lee Roth or Katie Lang or anybody? You know what? After being around and learning of what to do and what not to do, I treat everyone the same. I don't treat them any different. I treat everybody with kindness and respect, and everybody is on the same level. Right. And I think that's important, and、uh, you know, it's just how I do it and what I do. That's gotten you this far. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And you got churro with you. Yeah, which, I got you know, churro you too. You got security on your lap. Yeah, that was good. 
Now, I'm interested in the fact that you explore some darker themes in your music. A lot of their titles are related to more darker, like violent things. Yeah. But obviously, you're someone who values kindness and, right. you know, which is the opposite, you'd think. Why is it that you think you're drawn to darker things artistically? See, the scary people are the ones that are the kind and caring yeah, and I've, sweet. Yeah, I've found that. <laughs> and then that's what you have no idea. The scariest mm -hmm. people you would never have any idea. Yeah, it's you know? true. They, they walk amongst us. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, I mean, it, I just had such a fascination of how certain people would walk the earth and have no problem. I, I mean, that's why these documentaries and all these things are so popular. Yeah. Because it's so unfathomable to to be something like that you know i save bees out of the pool <laughs> yeah, yeah. you know <laughs> when you know but it's just that's what we do right but and that's why i was so fascinated just so fascinated with that in like like the things and the things that happen is just un unbelievable yeah. but yeah it's it was just very interesting to me and it's limitless. I mean, there's no yeah. shortage of bad people or, or darkness, unfortunately. So in terms of subject subject matter, I mean... Unfortunately, yeah. it's limitless, yeah. yeah. Do you ever worry that drawing attention is glorifying violence in any way? Um, I hope not. I think it was just everybody, listen, even children, Halloween, they dress up like, you know, monsters mm -hmm. and things like that. But I think that it's glorified anything like yeah. tv video games movies anything like yeah. that and people have an interest to it including myself yeah you know i have a few questions okay. for churro if we have time <laughs> yeah yeah uh -huh. i have one question yeah so you used to collect telecasters every year i was going to ask them that yeah. upstairs are you uh are you still doing that or did so you stop at a point i completed that because i oh, wow. i have a collective soul and i <laughs> I got one from every year, and I was like, well, I did it. I went to the top, and I, I did it. And then, so now, I collect old Kiss merchandise. I, I saw that in Guitar yeah. Player. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, I really enjoy it. And it's just a something from my childhood, and I really enjoy it. And I think it's a healthy hobby. It's, so it's good mm -hmm. to have a hobby you yeah, know because pursue you, something <laughs> you can only play so much guitar which i do you know so. so in that regard what's what is your 51 broadcaster of kiss memorabilia i have that's a fine question Thank i you. have gene's first outfit uh, from 1974 it's got the bat wings and these horns and everything like that it's a very very famous outfit and he only had one because they were just starting out and uh yeah i have that that's awesome. Pretty insane. With provenance, of course. We don't yeah. want it, some guy to... Because I saw someone selling them outside. Right, right, right. <laughs> right. <laughs> no, it's cool because I'm friends with all the guys and they give me, you know, uh, you know, history on it and who made it and how they had it. But yeah, they would... He rode on the subway with it. It's amazing. They only had one, you know. Well. <laughs> they were brand new. Well, so speaking of telecasters and all that, that fun stuff, why don't we go upstairs and check out your rig, see what you're playing tonight? I think that's a great idea. All Let's right, do walk it. Walk us through. Thank you. All right. This is Ryan and Kelly from AMS. We're here with David, John Five's uh, guitar tech and master of everything that he uses, including guns. The super ray gun, yeah. That's right. We'll talk about this later. Why don't you walk us through? We obviously have a lot of guitars and, and cool stuff. Get us going. Lots of guitars. Um, I guess let's just start off with the classic. Uh, this is Goldie. Um, and you can call it unfortunate or fortunate, but on this tour, this solo tour with John, uh, Goldie, um, his baby is a backup guitar. Oh. Um, it's a backup guitar mainly because he's got the number one ghost, which he's actually has right now. Got it. Um, got the number two ghost here. Uh, the number one and the number two ghost were the primary guitars on the more recent, uh, Motley Crue tour that oh, we just came yeah. off of the world tour. So, 
Um, I always call the number one, which he a actually has on his person now. I call that the president, and this is the vice president. Oh, he's actually holding that backstage, right? Yeah, he, wherever he is at, he yeah. has that on uh, his either, person. Uh, either that or churro. Have you met both, the dog? I have, okay. yeah, both. Well, I don't know. Um, arm. Both are, both, uh, one on each arm, <laughs> right, correct. And um, so he travels with that when we're on tour, and I travel with this. Okay. And again, just like the president and vice president, they can't travel together. So uh, walk us through, obviously we got a kill switch, we got some fun stuff. Tell me what makes this uh, different than your average telly. Um, what's cool about it is that we got the locking nut, and then we've got this uh, Floyd Rose action here, which again, for the Motley Crue stuff, it's very crucial. Oh yeah. Kickstart my heart. Of course. Um, and um, I, I love this guitar because it's a telly and a super strat and it's got the kill, kill switch and the action is just so beautiful on it and yeah. uh, the color is amazing as well. I was shocked when I heard him playing, you know, during the, the rig that he was doing before, it was how clean it was. It didn't seem like he doesn't use a lot of gain, even for the heavy stuff. Correct. Um, actually, that comes from, besides his fingers, Yeah. Um, that comes from the head that we're using, or the new um, EVH head that we're using. The EL EL34, which we love. Uh, very clean, very clean. Do not need a lot of gain, but it sounds like there's a lot of gain in there. Right. Um, but yes, we love these. They sound amazing. Is he using any particular channel, or is it? Is He's he only using the first two channels. He uses the clean channel and the dirty channel. Yeah. Um, the, the last, the three and the four are on lock. We don't even touch them. Yeah, well, that's a ton of gain. It and I is. think for the amount of cleaning and, you know, finger picking and stuff like that, you don't need all that compression. It sounds like he wants everything to punch. Correct. All right. Yes. Cool. Very clean. So um, he's using the EVH for everything? Everything. Really? Even the mandolins? Everything. Oh, wow. Wow. Mm. Very yes. cool. Yes. Yeah. Um, and, um, but yeah, we love them and, um, we love the, uh, gator cases that they, that everything lives in as well. Oh yeah. Well, listen, the gear is only <laughs> as good as the protection it comes in. That's right. right. And yeah. we've gone through a lot of, uh, you know, we've gone almost through, you know, the entire, from the West coast. Now we're in New York. Right. Um, and these things are just, they're, they're worth their weight in gold. Absolutely. Gator makes awesome stuff. And yes, they do. They're a big reason why we're here. As for the cabs, we're looking stock straight up, uh, stock, yeah. everything stock, nothing is modded or. No belt, no secret tricks about the factory. Nothing. Yeah. I wish I could say that, like, I, we got in there and we souped Tweaked things it. up. No, no, nothing. This is all stock. I assume, that based on the, the, the interviews that I've read with him, he likes to think that if, if he were in a city and he had, and something went wrong, he could go to a guitar mm. store of some sort. I won't mention any names. Like, just pick up whatever he needs and, and he could make it. That's make it exactly, th that's the exact reason why he gets the things he gets. Functionality. Correct. Tell me about this funky telly we got over here. Oh, this is the one that almost everybody loves. Of course. Um, it looks like a light bright. It is. Um, let me see if I can get these oh, switches uh. right. That's one of the the modes. And then the other one everybody loves is this one. Oh yeah, I might have a seizure, but all right. Yeah. <laughs> and believe it or not, though, this is not charged fully. I need to charge oh, the battery. That's at half wow. power? It is at half power. You know what's power. funny? I'm in a better mood now because of that. It helped my, <laughs> it helped my seasonal affective disorder, so thank you for doing nice. that. Nice. Yeah, it's um, cool. Runs on RC battery as well. Wow. So that's kind of cool. But yeah, people love this one, yeah. and we literally light up the venues that we play at. Yeah, blind yeah. people in the front row. <laughs> it's so awesome. I love it. That's cool, man. <laughs> Absolutely. That's all part of the show. It is. So t in, fr in the tellies you were talking about, the president and the... Uh, the vice president. Yeah. yeah. So what, how do they differ? Does one have a Floyd and one's a stop? One is a uh, hardtail. That's Got the, it. the president. And the vice president has the, the Floyd Rose style. Does right. he tend to do... For his shows, does he stick with one more than the other? or is it... He sticks with the hardtail more because that, that one is actually in standard tuning. Oh, okay. And the vice president... Um, is in what we call motley tuning. Oh, can Drop. you tell us what that is? Yeah, that's one. Job. That's one whole step down. Got it. So instead of E standard, which the other one is in, this is a D standard. Got it. Okay, very cool. So we obviously talked to EVHs. Tell me, tell me about this guy here. Obviously, we got a little Goldie. This is a mini Goldie, but it's actually a Goldie mandolin, which is very cute. Everybody loves this one as well. He was ripping on it. Yeah, it sounded great. Yeah, he's amazing on any kind of stringed instrument. Well, um, no kidding. Yeah. <laughs> Has this been customized in any way other than the finish or the pickup? Or I mean, this is no, again, no customization other than it's a, a replica of Goldie. Uh, it's just in a mandolin yeah. form. That's super um, cool. Obviously made by Fender. Oh, yeah. Which is why we all love Fender. Of course. <laughs> we bow to Fender. Absolutely. We bow to Fender. That's right. And of right. course, no show would be complete without a little banjo action. Oh, show with, me a lot of, with a little banjo picking. Oh, some... Uh, yeah, like you said earlier, obviously, he's a huge fan of uh, Hee Haw. <laughs> and um, yeah, this was um, actually made for John. Um, it's got his little John 5. Then you know it's his. Yeah, that's right. That's we, good. we can't lose it. Right. Um, six string banjo. 
Okay. So, and yeah. is it tuned in any particular way or straight up standard, like guitar standard? Standard tuning. I knew it. He was cheating the whole time. <laughs> it's all right. But he uh, plays this amazing, yeah, like, yeah. This, yeah, it awesome. it's such a great sound. He, he, you know, it's funny when you see a player who's so used to kind of playing one type of instrument and they switch, you can f you almost feel that they're uncomfortable. It doesn't seem like it's just a part of him. It doesn't matter. You hand him something, he's ready to go. Yeah. That's pretty awesome. That's because Makes that's, your job easy. That's because that's all John does is play guitar. Right. <laughs> yeah, that's true. He collects Kiss memorabilia and plays guitar. And plays with his hairless dog. <laughs> which, which sounds worse than it is. Tough. That's a cute, <laughs> that's a very that cute dog, by the way. He is. He's awesome. I mean, you know, he bit my finger he's, off. He's got his own, he's got his own pick, oh, by the way. Look at that. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Can Kelly have one? Yeah, can yeah, I? Yeah, yeah, you sure have one. <laughs> hey, that's thanks, awesome. Man. Spread the love. And let's check out some pedals. It looks yes, like let's, we've got let's um, do that. straightforward boss. Very straightforward. Essentially, he has four pedals on that thing. You, you're, you're looking at six, actually. Um, one of the pedals is doubled up, the Super um, Overdrive. Um, he doubles up on the Super Overdrive because um, when he wants really high gain, pinch squeals and okay. pinch harmonics, he uses that. Um, but essentially, he's got uh, that, a uh, delay, a reverb and a chorus. What more do you need? Yeah. Um, other than the boss. noise suppression, but you know, you don't really hear anything from the noise suppression. No, not at all. It right. just kind of clamps down, keeps it nice and clean. And you know, it's, it's interesting, you know, everybody thinks that people are moving on to all these boutique pedals, which are great, but sometimes really all you need is a couple boss pedals and some talent. Exactly. Yeah, the talent know, is that's some John Fry talent. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you keep talking about that. That's awesome. So again, he could fly anywhere kind of, if he didn't have his board, you run out, you get it, and there's no tricks to it. It's just Correct. It's, that's what he's using. Correct. And again, all the all the pedals, uh, none of them are modded or anything. It's just they're right out of the box. Damn. Total John Five. You style. always want there to be a trick. But and then, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Not, I, 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 fans ask all the time, and I'm like, no, those are just stock mm -hmm. pedals. But when you hear someone play that well, and you, it, you, it, it makes it look like because Greg and I were talking out there, we're looking and we're watching him play, and I'm like, it doesn't even look like he's trying. <laughs> you know so what I mean? Like you bored right now. Oh like, my God, <laughs> I'd be standing in my own filth if I even tried. So it's just that's, the fact that, you know. That's what he does. <laughs> that's what he does. And tell me about this before we go, because. Ah, uh, the super space ray gun. <laughs> um, he, actually 5, used, he, uh, he actually uses that. 5,000. He actually uses oh. that during the show. I die. Um, he blasts the pickups of one of the instruments during the show, and it shoots around, and it's great. It's, it's a, all for fun. It's a great visual and a great effect, yeah. And one last thing, because I was kind of curious. I noticed we're looking at the EVH stuff, and there's a, a low lead basement over there. Is that to handle anything, or is that just for fun? That's for tracks. Okay, got it. But we actually also play through it. Oh, okay. Mm. Uh, we do a Motley medley. Oh, okay, all right. And so that's not on tracks. I actually pick up the bass, and I play with John. I oh, get you to actually do? Play. Yeah, it's actually pretty fun. That's my 15 minutes every night, or I should say eight minutes. <laughs> hey, well, hey, listen, man, you got to stay ready. You know, That's you right. need that low end. Mm -hmm. Well, it's it sounded fun. great. I appreciate the time, man. Thank it's you for awesome coming. I, this is great in, in New York City, too. It's like perfect. <laughs> it is. It's awesome. And, and again, thanks to our pals at Gator for making all this stuff safe and sound, getting it to and from every yes, show. Yes, I love these things. I know. It must make everything better until you drop on your foot. No, yeah. I mean, I haven't yet, but yeah. I, will would, now. I, I, wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't care either way, as long as, as long as the babies are taken care of. That's right. Thank you, David. I appreciate it. <laughs> Thank, Thank you very you. much, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe for more content like this, and head on over to AmericanMusical.com to check out all of the gear featured in this video.